So <laughs> we'll go in chronological order. Um, so My Beautiful Laundrette in 1985, although the director was hesitant about casting Daniel Day-Lewis as a working class punk due to his privileged background, coming up as a as a well-off actor and trained so well, the actor convinced him by mailing a letter that announced that he would break the director's leg if he did not get the part. <laughs> And then in 1988, for the unbearable lightness of being, uh, Daniel Day-Lewis learned how to speak Czech, even though the script was written in English. However, he wasn't satisfied with his efforts because he thought he failed to become a Czech. And he actually didn't even speak Czech at all in the film, but he, he has like a Czech accent, but I think he just learned Czech because the it's character the word, Tomas yeah, is, is from. Czech. Yeah. Yeah. And then in 1989, in My Left Foot, based on Christy Brown's memoir, Daniel Day Lewis, to get into character, refused to go anywhere without his wheelchair and even insisted on being wheeled to restaurants and around the set. And he even was fed by people on set because he had cerebral palsy, the character, so he kept going at that method on set. He also broke two ribs because he was hunched over throughout the entire production and that ended up like dislocating his ribs. Yeah, and he was communicating to people on set with a typewriter, I believe, that he was just typing on with his left foot. Amazing. So he went pretty far with that. He, that was his first Oscar, too. In the movie The Crucible, to get into his character of John Proctor, Daniel Day-Lewis also built the house that John Proctor lives in in the movie. And while they made the film, Daniel Day-Lewis lived in that film himself during production. Yeah, so actually, 1996, The Crucible, he stayed on Massachusetts on a Massachusetts island in the film sets replica village without electricity or running water. He planted fields with the 17th century tools and built, like you said, the character's house. And I believe a table as well. And that's where he met his wife, Rebecca Miller, who directed the film. In she's, nine, a, she's a really great director. Yeah, it's a really good movie. In 1989, and when he was playing Hamlet in the theater production, again, this is where we talk about where he claimed that he saw his father on stage. And um, this is actually a quote from him. I had the strange sensation that I was talking to my father. What he said to me on that night seemed particularly hard to bear. To some extent, I probably saw my father's ghost every night because, of course, if you're working in a play like Hamlet, you explore everything through your own experience. So that's how Anthony was talking about how intense his imagination must be where he's actually playing a character who sees his father's ghost he actually sees his father's ghost which is incredible mm -hmm. then 1992 the last of the mohicans in michael mann's epic historical drama starring daniel day lewis as hawkeye he in order to prepare adequately for the role he learns how to survive in the wilderness by actually learning how to skin and cook animals daniel day lewis also built a canoe of his own trained with tomahawks and figured out how to fire and reload a 12 pound flint lock rifle on the run also, during the making of Last Mohicans, Daniel Day-Lewis fully became Hawkeye, obviously, for the entire production. And that film took place uh, over Christmas. And so during the Christmas break, he went home and had Christmas with his family. But he he went as Hawkeye, obviously. And so he sat down at the Christmas table as Hawkeye and put his rifle down on the table beside him. That's wild. In the name of the father in 1993, based on actual events, this 1993 biopic starred Daniel Day-Lewis as a wrongfully accused inmate who spends more than a decade in prisoner the the actor got into character by losing 50 pounds and spent around 48 hours in solitary confinement of an actual prison without any food or water that's crazy 1997 i think he was obviously kept away from other prisoners yeah but it was yeah he was in solitary confinement by but himself. he also asked the crew of the film to shout disparaging remarks at him to um like literally like call him names and to throw cold water at him while he was in the prison cell and to not let him eat food. In The Boxer in 1997, Daniel Day-Lewis plays a boxer, obviously, Danny Flynn. And he trained for three years to get into the proper headspace of a boxer. Boxer, And according to his trainer, which Anthony talked about earlier, Daniel Day-Lewis attained the required skill to compete at a professional level if you eliminate the top 10 middleweights in Britain. He also gave himself a tattoo on his hand. And then for Gangs of New York as Bill the Butcher, Daniel Day-Lewis got incredibly sick because he refused to wear any clothing that was not authentic and they shot this in the middle of winter and thus because the clothing was not very um warm he got pneumonia and, and you don't get obviously you don't get pneumonia from the cold but he yeah. his immunity was obviously weakened exactly. he's around hundreds of people every day so he probably yeah. got For months for probably months. got a virus or infection and it led to pneumonia because he wasn't wearing clothes because he was weakened and for months he refused to accept medication because it's not it was too modern and so he finally agreed to take some antibiotics when he got seriously sick. He also, for Gangs of New York, listened to Eminem at 5 in the morning every day, specifically emphasizing on the song The Way I Am from the Marshall Mathers LP. He learned how to throw cumbersome knives with pinpoint accuracy. He wore a glass contact lens for the scenes where, remember, he taps his eyeball with the knife. And he was also apprenticed as a butcher. 
for the movie Phantom Thread to prepare for his role as Reynolds Woodcock, he became an apprentice dressmaker of couture dresses, which is a, it's a high fashion handmade dress. It's very, very expensive kind of dress. Under Mark Happel. Yeah, and he was the, uh, he was the costume designer for the um, London Ballet. Uh, New York City Ballet. New York City Ballet, I'm sorry. And so he trained with him for over a year as uh, his assistant, uh, as his apprentice. And then he finally made Phantom Thread. Yeah, and then he actually even made his own dress that his wife has yeah. actually worn to events. That was his final preparation for the film was to just create a, a, a complete couture dress by himself, which is a really very difficult thing to do. Yeah, so he sketched it and made it himself. Super impressive thing to do. And I think the sketches in the film are actually of his that he's made. Yeah, those all the sketches in that scene um, when he brings Volma back to the house, those are all by his own hand. Thanks for confirming. <laughs> I, I, I confirmed with Daniel Day earlier. Yeah, he, in the T9 text messaging. <laughs> <laughs> in The Ballad of Jack and Rose, which came out in 2005, he, to prepare for the role, Daniel Day-Lewis learned more about isolation by living in a shack without his family for most of the production. He also built a kitchen table, and he played an iconoclast living off the grid, so he actually really did it. In uh, There Will Be Blood, this is actually a very funny one. During the climactic scene between uh, Daniel and Eli, when he's throwing his bowling balls at him in the bowling alley, he was actually throwing real bowling balls at Paul Dano. I'm every time I watch him, like there's, that's definitely a real they're, bowling they ball. They bounce too realistically yeah. to be fake. There's no way they're fake. They're, they're heavy. And it's, it's a Paul Thomas Anderson movie, so yeah. you know it's gonna be real. And it's Daniel Day, so you know he's like, I'm not throwing a, a fake ball. A I wonder if he ball. even told him about it. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> now you understand. Now I understand why D Paul Dano literally has a serious look of fear in his face for real. Also in There Will Be Blood, he actually didn't do a ton of prep for the character besides creating him on his own for, in terms of like method acting. So he just read the first like 150 pages of Upton Sinclair's oil. And then besides that, he just came up with it on his own. And there's a rumor where he built an oil derrick and like oiled <laughs> and like tried to get oil on his own, which is which is totally BS. But he actually said in an interview that that's not a bad idea. Maybe he should have tried it. But yeah, he didn't. Use, he didn't do anything method crazy. He just was the character, but he didn't do anything crazy research or prep wise for it. Maybe he like dug some holes. Maybe I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, just to get in the headspace of that character, which is probably his best. It's yeah. incredible to just fathom that. Mm -hmm. And then in Lincoln, um, we talked about it earlier where he basically, you know, he's Abe Lincoln on set, so all people on set would call him. Mr. President or colleagues like with Spielberg, they'd call him Abe. He'd sign text messages, yours, A, or or from Abe, stuff like that. And also, just I mean, just to create the character of a person that you don't know what they sound like, it's absolutely incredible. What's interesting about the Abe Lincoln character is historically in all forms of media, TV, or film, Abe Lincoln was always portrayed with a very deep voice, mm -hmm. like Abe Lincoln. But it was... Dan D. Lewis's voice is very high-pitched, and he did that on purpose because... Through his research, and many people wrote about it, uh, Abe actually had a pretty high-pitched voice, and this actually worked in his benefit because a higher-frequency voice can travel further across a, a crowd, whereas if he had a deeper voice, it would be harder for people in the backs of crowds to hear him. And so there are lots of um, people who wrote about how even thousands of people behind, even, even if they were behind thousands of people, they could still hear Abe Lincoln, Lincoln's um, higher-pitched voice carry across the entire area. That's interesting. 